So dyslexia is an unexplained difficulty in learning to read. And by unexplained, we mean it's not because your vision is poor or your hearing is poor, but you seem to have all the capacities you need to become a good reader, but you don't and you struggle as a child. It's estimated to affect about 10% of uh, children, so one in 10. So every classroom will have one or two children who will really struggle to learn to read. So brain imaging studies in the past have found differences in poor readers, both in brain structure and function. But we didn't know those brain differences were due to the consequence of poor reading or the cause of poor reading. In the study in the Journal of Neuroscience, we wanted to address this question. And the way we did it is we did brain imaging with kindergartners. We were seeing these kindergartners before they had explicit reading instruction in their school. Elizabeth uh, Norton is a postdoctoral fellow, and she organized much of the uh, recruiting and screening and uh, brain imaging of the children. As part of this study, we work with 25 schools in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, uh, charter schools, Catholic schools, public schools, a whole range of different types of classrooms in different areas. So previous studies in adults and older children have shown that certain white matter pathways in the brain, and one in particular, the arcuate fasciculus, is smaller and less well organized in people who have dyslexia. So we set out to find out in children who were just beginning kindergarten if this area was already smaller and less well organized. When a child enrolls in this longitudinal part of the study with us, they come for the first visit to MIT where we do EEG and behavioral assessment and then they come for a second visit for MRI within a few weeks later. The behavioral assessments that we do with the children um, cover three main areas and when we work with children we set them up as games and the one game or task that we found is really related to the brain in this study is called phoneme blending. So we would say to the child, I'm going to play you a series of sounds over your headphones and you're going to listen to these recorded sounds and blend them together to make a word. So if over their headphones they heard hmm, ah, they would blend it together and the right answer would be mat. They spend about 45 minutes in the MRI for us to take a few different types of scans and do a couple of functional tasks. And actually the last one we do is this diffusion weighted scan that we're looking at in this paper. My colleague Zainab Sagan analyzed these diffusion weighted imaging measures. What we're looking at here um, with the fusion weight imaging is long-range connectivity, so the pathways of the brain that connect uh, regions to one another. Axons, which are um, what allows a neuron to communicate with another neuron, are myelinated with a fatty sheet, and so this makes water diffuse in, a, in one particular orientation. And so we can compute that for every small area of the brain, and we can sort of connect the lines to create what we see as tractographic images like this one. So what we found uh, was that children with a smaller arcuate fasciculus, the lower their awareness of how phonemes blend together to form a word. And we found that um, not only the volume, but the organization of the white matter tracks. And we can actually see it here. So these are four subjects. We can see just the mere size of the arcuate. It's very different in a child who, whose score is zero on the blending words test versus 11 on the blending words test. So we could see these brain differences present before reading instruction, which strongly suggests that they're part of the problem that a child faces in learning to read or part of the cause of poor reading rather than the consequence of lack of reading practice. The next step is exactly longitudinally following those same children. We're following these in several years of children to see whether we can predict accurately which child will succeed and which will fail at reading. We, we understand uh, dyslexia as a consequence of a, of a brain organization that is not optimal for reading. And so if we can figure out what, how to measure those effectively, you know, we can identify those children for whom intensive immediate intervention might make a big difference in their lives.